this is Mike Moshe Cadwallader. Thanks for tuning in to Fun Finance Friday Industry Conversations. With me today is the world famous Dee Dee Sklar. Dee Dee, it's been too long. How you doing? I'm great, Mike. How are you? Yeah, doing really, really well. It's been, I can't believe how long it's been since I've seen you in person, but it's good to see you over Zoom. It's great to be here. It's great to remember all the time that we've spent with each other in this industry and seeing how it's grown. And I'm really appreciative of the time to speak with you. When you first came to me, it was a little bit too early. You had just done one podcast and I wasn't sure yet what I would be doing. (laughs) It's fun. It's been a great run. We've certainly been really fortunate. So uh, it's been about two years now since your retirement. Tell us a little bit about the transition and what you've been up to. So it's almost two years since the retirement. That'll be the end of this year. And I kind of look at it as looking back at February at the last FFA Global Symposium. And that was really when I started and you started, we came back and we were in the pandemic. And all of a sudden I said, well, how am I gonna start these board and advisor initiatives? And water seems to have found a level. So if you'd like me to tell you about some of the roles, I'll go ahead and get started. And so the first one, which really relates to our industry is with a former client, 17 Capital. And what makes 17 Capital unique is that they have a supervisory board. So just a little bit about them. Um, It's almost a team of 60. This year, we opened up a Paris office. They're headquartered in London. And they've been in the US, in New York for almost five years. And we increased our footprint. And we're now also in San Francisco. And so what makes them different is that they're 14 years old, going on 15, and they started a supervisory board very early with someone out of asset management and also a global investor alliance, uh, alliance rather. And then they also added the head of alts from Hoop in Canada. And three of us initially came on as advisors and have moved to the board. And that includes um, EPIC, which is a global charity that is helping disadvantaged youths. And that includes um, myself and Bev Berman. Bev comes out of the private equity world, THL and Advent, and also was a lead investor with Colorado Purse and private equity, and then me out of banking. And it's really interesting because from the banking standpoint, I can work with the guys on collaborative strategy, and I can think about strategic risk, which to me is very different than the other risks we're used to in banking and in our firms. And I've also been able to get involved in their digital transformation. And most important, they're all about ESG. So not only have they signed on to the UN initiative and ELPA's initiative, but they've also put their um, mindset where their earnings are coming from. And they're the first private equity firm I know to give a portion of their charity, I mean, of their carry to, to charity, to Epic. So that makes it really fun and exciting for me. The second one I'll tell you about, Um, came to me through a former Carlisle partner, and I'm on the board of a public SPAC. And that SPAC is led by Mark Gross, who's the former chairman of Super Value Grocer. And the team includes someone from ANS, large US grocer wholesaler, uh, one person from TPG formerly, and two people from banking and technology. And there I'm on the board with the just former chairman of NBC Universal and the current global head of M&A and strategy for Ahold out of Belgium, which also bought Foodline and Fresh Direct. So we are NASDAQ listed, City was our underwriter. 
there um, I've been able to come to play in terms of we're looking for a business combination, some of which may come out of our former, my former clients, our former clients jointly. And that's been real exciting to get involved in all the committees, audit, governance, nominating, and of course, audit is the most active. And the third situation that came about is that um, I, I had two people that I worked with in subscription who left and went to technology. And I'm on the business advisory board of Tealbook, which is a woman founded company, all about supply, supply chain and data foundation, started out in the pharmaceutical companies. They were way ahead of us, as Johnson & Johnson would tell us that buying palm oil from Africa, you need to be sure you're dealing with an ESG certified company and not they're not using slave labor. Or Pfizer would tell you that they cannot be buying a compound from Southeast Asia and without being sure it didn't emanate from a sanctioned country. So on that board is very interesting. Um, I have the former COO of Cushman and Whitefield and the former head of procurement for 38 years, Procter and Gamble and others. And when I came on board, the company was in its seed round and it executed its series A early because in 2020, they grew by 147%. And this year we're growing by 300%. So we're going to our series B early. Um, by the way, Walt Jackson is an investor in the company, which is fun and also all of our clients, namely our technology clients, a lot of them are in the data room right now. And then I'm a board nominee, which comes from some of my Wells Fargo colleagues uh, to another SPAC, which is headed by a credit platform. And the CEO is the former head of Alts, a credit investing BDCs, for Fidelity and with him on the management team are people from firms that we know like Goldman and Anna Lee and Morgan Stanley. And on the board with me, fun as it be, um, is Bill Janacek who was the just stepped out 25 year global CFO for KKR and Patty Perez who comes to us as a lawyer, not only from large firms, but from private equity. So all of that is fun. And then I've had some advisory roles, um, which also add to the mix of keeping me busy. But I am looking for a few more board roles. That's terrific. Fantastic and really interesting stuff that you're up to. You're still doing a lot with Women's in Fund Finance as well. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on with WFF? Um, I can tell you a little bit about what's going on in WFF, and I want to give a plug right here for Prequin, because Prequin's been a partner of ours since the beginning of the FFA and WFF, and when I'm kind of looking to put the stats together of how women have progressed, especially making it to the C-suite in the boardroom, I check in with Prequin. And so just as I tell you about WFF, let me tell you that it's the most impactful thing that I could have ever been blessed to be a part of. And I couldn't have done that, Mike, without your support and Nick Mitra and the board. And Nick Mitra is my co-global head of Women in Fund Finance. He's like a brother, he's a partner. And we have seven co-heads in three jurisdictions, US, Europe, and Asia. And without those seven co-heads and the, the committees that we have created, which is a combination of people out of the banks, the law firms, the investors, and private equity, I don't think we could have pulled off, but we are up to close to 2,400 members right now. And this year alone, we've had 38 programs, still a few more to go, and seven of those have been global. And what's it about? We have had board ready programs. So, you know, along with me being the first to step out, 
I've helped to put people together from all those areas. And we've had board ready programs with the accounting firms in general for everybody. We've also had development programs with uh, personal presentation and leading like a woman. And we have also sector programs on the different sectors, including real estate and credit. And in fact, my this year is the first year I've been able to really work on some projects with Cadwallader women. Excellent. Leah has turned out to be a great help. We pulled off our first uh, women in Boston event, and we're going to be following that with other cities. And with Sam, um, I've worked on the fun solutions events, and we had so much interest and people willing to participate as speakers that that's turned out to be two events. And I have to tell you, she is one smart woman, and I'm really glad that I've had this opportunity to start working with her. So um, with Women in Fun Finance, I can tell you that along with the FFA, we're out raising money right now for the 2022 season. Um, so we're talking to all of the banks and all of the law firms, and it's hard to believe, but you know we've had 140 of these firms participate with us over the years, which is really great. Well, Didi, that's great. Thank you so much for being with us. You know, I'll be forever grateful for the positive influences you've had on my career. Uh, we were, we're really glad to have you and good to catch up with you today. Uh, listeners, thanks a lot for dialing in. The material and information contained in the podcast is for general informational purposes only. Any use of the audio within this podcast without the express consent of Cadwallader is prohibited. Quotes from this podcast may not be used without the express permission of the speaker.